Hi there, welcome. My name is Jason, and today I'm here to talk to you about a plant called Ficus lorata, also known as the fiddle leaf fig. This is an absolutely awesome plant, possibly the most popular plant of our time. This plant is native to the tropical rainforest of West Africa, and it lends itself as an awesome addition to any home or office space. So we'll get to the care instructions right away. Uh, as far as starting with your ficus lorata, you want to select the right one that's appropriate for your space. So keep in mind the lighting that you need. Uh, the type of light that this plant wants is it wants bright indirect light. And it really does want brighter indirect light. I would say bright light, just no direct sunlight because that will burn the leaves. So uh, think of where you want to put it. You also want to keep it away from drafty doors and out of the way of uh, your central AC or any air conditioning, anything would blow air at it because it essentially just wants to be left alone. It wants, uh, you know, a level of humidity. It doesn't want to be dried out by, um, by the air and it doesn't want cold drafts from the door in the winter. Uh, once you've selected your spot, um, you know, also think of, you know, how tall do you want it? Uh, this plant comes uh, as small as, like this one is in a four inch pot, um, to as large as, I mean, much, much larger than this, uh, but this is a large variety. Um, pick a variety that has as few blemishes as possible on the leaves. Uh, look for leaves to make sure there's not giant rips and tears. Uh, you want to look for one with a very nice form, um, bright green, upright, perky leaves. Uh, you want uh, the stem to be very firm and healthy. Uh, once you've selected your ficus, um, you'll bring it home. What is common is uh, know to expect a little bit of leaf drop. Um, that doesn't always happen, especially um, if you've selected a very vibrant one, but even the most vibrant one still will drop some leaves. Uh, this plant, once you've found a home for it in your, in your house or office, you want to leave it there. Uh, this plant doesn't like to be moved around too much. Uh, between it leaving the nursery and being distributed to whatever nursery or um, wherever you bought yours, uh, this plant ends up traveling a lot. And so, you know, it, it, it gets a little bit stressed out. Uh, it's totally normal. Uh, when you bring it home, um, I just groom it up a little bit uh, if that's necessary at all. And so what you want to do is just get some gloves and a disinfected pair of pruning shears and any unsightly discolored leaves, uh, not new growth from the top, but from, you know, the older growth from the, the lower part of the canopy. If you see um, anything discolored uh, or not sightly, just remove it. Uh, expect that there will be some white sap that comes out. Uh, it's a mild skin irritant, and so just don't get it on your hands. That's why you want to wear the gloves uh, and be cognizant of that. When you make your pruning cuts, expect it. Um, it's totally fine. The sap will dry and the wound will heal. Um, as far as uh, watering goes for this plant, uh, you want to let the soil dry out about 50% in between waterings. Um, if you have this in not the brightest location, you can let the soil dry out about 60 to 65% in between waterings. But you really want to, um, you don't want to let it completely dry out because this plant does want to retain a level of humidity. Um, as far as uh, overwatering, uh, really try not to overwater this plant. Um, it doesn't want, uh, you don't want to experience root rot. Um, that's where if you overwater it on a regular basis and the soil stays consistently wet all the way through, um, you run the risk of uh, the roots rotting. Uh, so what I do is a simple lip test. Um, you know, when you get your plant, uh, you water it, um, just give it a little lift. Um, if you can't lift it, you know, just a little tilt, and you'll know what saturated soil feels like. So that when you come back to water it again, you'll know the difference when the soil is dry. If you come back and the soil is still heavy and wet, and um, it's not dry uh, to any degree, um, just wait a little bit longer. You want to allow the soil to, to dry out about 50% in between waterings. Uh, that's just your aim, you don't have to get it perfect. Um, as far as fertilization goes, you want to fertilize this plant once a month, spring through summer. That is the growth season for this plant. That's why you fertilize it at that time of the year. Um, a fertilizer I like to use is Espoma Organic Indoor Houseplant Fertilizer. Uh, the reason I like this a lot is because it's formulated with a bunch of beneficial bacteria for indoor houseplant soil. Um, I've had great success with it for my indoor plants, and uh, but just know also that there's a plethora of uh, indoor houseplant fertilizers that do amazing jobs. So if you if that one's not available, uh, you have a lot of choices. Um, it's just the one I like. Um, as far as uh, choosing your container for your plant, um, I recommend a plastic pot, um, either the one that it came in, or you can pot it up into one. And what I like about that 
is, uh, for one, uh, it does help retain that humidity I was talking about that the plant wants. Um, you know, the soil that you use um, is going to be an indoor houseplant pine soil, um, which retains a level of moisture, but also is well drained. So uh, this plastic pot will give you some of the humidity that you want. It also gives you the freedom uh, to choose whatever decorative pot you want to use. I would use a decorative pot that's slightly larger than the one that you have your plant planted into. Just take a plastic saucer, put it in your decorative pot to have a place for your water to drain, and then in you go. Um, one thing I want to point out is that uh, the leaves on this plant, they tend to reach for the light. So whatever direction the light is coming from, uh, they will want to uh, you know, face that way. So what I recommend is once to twice a month, uh, just turn your pot like quarterly or by a third. Uh, like see, the leaves are they're already facing me because that was where the light source was. Well, not me, but the, in the room that this plant was placed in. Um, the leaves are facing the light source, and so now they're facing you guys again. Uh, so, rotating the plant, what that does is it gives all of the leaves from all angles of the plant a chance to get some really good light exposure. Uh, that will also encourage a very upright and rounded form for your plant. Uh, what you really don't want is to just leave it in one direction, and the leaves will face towards the light, and you know, and then just have to have the branches start reaching out over, maybe over the couch, causing the plant to fall over. Um, to avoid that, rotate your plant. And then also uh, pruning. Um, so you want to prune this plant uh, anywhere from mid-spring to mid-summer. Uh, the reason I recommend that is because that's within the growth season of the plant, but not completely through it, because you want to use the growth season to allow any cuts and wounds that you make, um, not only on the roots when you're repotting this plant, but when it comes to pruning, you want it to leaf out where you make your cuts. And whenever you make a cut, um, make sure that you use gloves and a sterilized pair of pruning shears because, uh, once again, the sap that's a, that's a skin irritant, you don't want to get it on your hands. So, um, so when you make a cut, you're going to want to make cuts at leaf nodes. And what that is, is so you have all of your leaves. If you follow the leaf to the base, um, usually there's a, a short, green, um, fleshy tissue that connects the leaf to the main trunk or branch. Um, that the leaf is attached to. Uh, so say for example, I'm gonna make a cut uh, just above this leaf right here. You always wanna cut above the leaf node where the leaf petiole, which is the base of the leaf, that little green stem where it meets the branch, cut above it on a downward angle. Uh, and there will be some sap that comes out, but don't worry, it'll dry. Uh, and then just prune it to shape. Um, I don't recommend pruning more than a third of the plant at a time because you don't wanna overstress it, but that probably won't be something that you need to do ever because um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a house plant. I mean, like, it's not going to explode. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, it's, that's a really, really easy thing to do. Just make sure that you do your pruning mid-spring through mid-summer. Uh, when you do your repotting, um, you're going to want to use an all-purpose indoor plant potting soil. Uh, and um, the reason I recommend doing this mid-spring through mid-summer is because any roots that you remove, you want to allow them to regrow and fill in the... Um, the pot that you either are reusing or the larger one that you're using. Um, what I've done right here is I have a, a quick um, repotting tip for ficus lorata. Uh, what I have here is a cork saucer and a plate. And they're just to um, use as an example of two different size pots. So say we're looking down um, bird's eye view on the first pot that you start with. Say you start with a ficus lorata that's planted into a six inch pot. So the diameter is six inches. Um, most of the root mass is right here. So when you repot it, say you pot it up to an eight inch pot, you know, so the diameter is now eight inches. I don't recommend doing too dramatic of a pot up um, for this reason that I'm about to explain to you. So say you've repotted your plant um, from a six inch to an eight inch. Uh, most of the soil around the parameter of the majority of the root mass, um, there's not, the roots haven't filled that in yet. So if you give it a heavy watering, the soil that's around the main root mass um, is gonna stay wet for a longer than ideal time, increasing your probability for root rot. So what you want to do when you repot this plant, if you pot it into a larger pot, is um, initially start watering from the center where most of the roots are at, and then gradually over the next couple months to five months, uh, just gradually water outwards to, um, to water those roots as they grow and fill in your larger container. And they will fill in the larger container, but it, it, you know, it's going to be over the course of a few months. With that tip in mind, you can dramatically increase the probability of your plant um, 
gracefully surviving a repot. Um, as far as uh, toxicity goes, uh, this plant is rated medium low, which is, uh, that just means it's an ornamental, it's not for eating, you know, uh, but just be cognizant of that. It's a medium low toxicity rating. Um, and uh, mostly it's, you know, the sap, I was mentioning the sap, sap being a skin irritant, that's only gonna happen when you're breaking the leaves and cutting the leaves off. Um, a lot of these plants are very tall and out of reach, so, um, you know, not always, but, <laughs> but sometimes they are. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as far as dust, these leaves are absolutely gorgeous. Um, what happens over time, you'll notice though, is that dust collects on the leaves. And so I have a really quick and easy tip for you to use when d getting the dust off of your leaves. Just take your plant outside in the morning, and oh, by the way, when you water your plant, always water in the morning. Um, by watering your plant in the morning, uh, that allows the plant through photosynthesis to redistribute the water that's in the soil to all the roots and branches and leaves throughout the course of the day, which is a very, very healthy way to water your plant uh, and also increase its, um, you know, livelihood. So uh, keep that in mind, always do that in the morning. When it comes to rinsing off the leaves, just do that in the morning too. So once in a while you want to rinse the leaves off uh, to get the dust off, just go outside, get the hose, get your garden spray nozzle and uh, set it to mist. And what I do is I just mist all the, with the mist jet, I mist the dust off the leaves, and then I get a paper towel, dab it up, you know, give your plants a little shake, uh, get any, you know, get most of that water off. It has the rest of the day to dry out. Um, it'll appreciate that little bit of humidity. Um, you can, um, once in a while, give the leaves an occasional mist, but I recommend doing that in the morning so that it has time to dry by the time we hit the evening. And um, winter through, well, fall through winter, um, that is the rest period for this plant, um, or more dormant period. It's not in a growth phase. You don't need to fertilize it fall through winter because of the fact that it's not going to be doing a lot of growing. Uh, just make sure it's not near those cold, drafty doors. And yeah, if there's any questions that you have about this plant uh, that maybe cover topics that I haven't covered in this video, please feel free to comment below. Uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and learned a lot more about this lovely plant called Ficus florata. My name's Jason again. Thanks for hanging out.